Who do you think would win? The world's most used browser on desktop and mobile platforms by far, which is also backed by a multi-trillion dollar parent company, which is also behind the world's largest search engine, or three little CVE boys. That's right, Google Chrome, the browser that is most loved by pretty much everyone, even though there's so many better non-botnet, non-RAM gobbling alternatives, has been pwned yet again by a critical zero day vulnerability. And no, this isn't just some theoretical attack that some security researchers and lab coats and black hoodies were able to pull off and then they responsibly reported to Google. No, this is actively being exploited in the wild right now. And this is happening less than two weeks after Google released an update for Chrome that included 47 security fixes, eight of which had a high threat rating, and at least one of them allowed for remote code execution. So from my perspective, it kind of looks like the browser giant is having a pretty difficult time fighting off hackers that are constantly taking advantage of exploits in it. In fact, I found this table that outlines the number of vulnerabilities that Chrome has had over the years and their average severability scale from one to 10. Um, and then it's also sorted by the year. And Chrome has had more vulnerabilities in the first couple of months this year alone than, well, almost more than in all of 2018. In fact, they're probably going to end up beating their score for 2018 before springtime is over. And so far, the average severability score is higher than it has ever been. Mind you, we aren't even through the first quarter of 2021. And if this trend were to continue at the pace that it's going, this could end up being the worst year for Google Chrome in terms of vulnerabilities. And what makes things even more concerning is that Google really hasn't released any additional details about this exploit yet. And I think the main reason for them doing this is that they actually don't have the fully patched version available to the mainstream public yet. Uh, so the patch is going to come in version 89.0.4389.90. And that was released to, I think it's the testing branch uh, this last Friday. So like it's only been out for maybe 24 hours or so. Uh, so we'll probably see this update get pushed to the stable branch or whatever branch it is that automatically updates people's browsers in a week or so. But Google is basically trying to do damage control by just not telling people about the exploit. You know, maybe for fear that more hackers are going to further exploit this vulnerability, but that's pretty much just security through obscurity, right? I mean, the thing is with hackers, they've probably already been sharing details about that. You know, they've probably been sharing details for a while because whenever there is a zero day vulnerability, it's pretty safe to assume that it was being exploited by hackers for at least a few weeks before it got leaked to the public. You know, whenever a zero day vulnerability gets released, it's usually when a white hat hacker discovers it and they, you know, report it to the um, person who's making the software or the service that's being exploited. It's kind of like how the crypto miners are allegedly sharing a hacked version of NVIDIA's driver amongst themselves so that they can get better hash rates on the 3060 just a few weeks after the launch of those cards. But despite Google not wanting to give us a lot of information about these vulnerabilities, I will share with you what has been uh, shared to the public so far. Um, so there's basically three vulnerabilities that are included here. Um, they go from a high risk to a critical risk. Um, and they're all pretty much this use after free. One of them is this heap based buffer overflow. Um, but you see that this critical one here is also use after free, which is a type of dangling pointer issue. And a dangling pointer is pretty much a memory safety problem that occurs whenever a pointer isn't pointing to a valid object. 
Uh, this usually happens after an object with an incoming reference is deleted without modifying the value of the pointer. So the pointer is still pointing to deallocated memory. And when that happens, unpredictable things start to happen, sort of like what you would see with a buffer overflow exploit where uh, just, you know, memory isn't being managed correctly. So remember kids, coding is a lot like walking through a briar patch. You gotta make sure that you secure your dangly bits. Otherwise, bad things are gonna happen. Uh, and like I said, the risk level of this vulnerability is critical because it actually allows for the execution of arbitrary code on the victim's machine. And I would imagine that the majority of people that are using Google Chrome are gonna be on Windows. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the percentage of Chrome users on Windows is gonna be much higher compared to Mac and Linux because those OSs at least ship with somewhat decent browsers. You know, usually the Mac users are okay with Safari and generally the Linux users are okay with Firefox, or if they're not, they'll just end up installing some wicked obscure browser uh, that nobody's ever heard of. But if remote code execution occurs on a Windows machine, it's pretty much fucked because at least in my experience with hacking Windows machines on Hack the Box and my own pen testing labs, that's always the difficult part, right? The difficult part is getting remote code execution, getting a reverse shell on the Windows machine in the first place. But if you want to escalate privileges and become an admin on the machine, that's a piece of cake. I mean, there's literally a Metasploit module, Bypass UAC, uh, that you can typically use to do that. I could turn a regular remote shell into an admin shell with my hand tied behind my back, and I'm just a beginner hacker. Um, so now we come to the question of what do you do to protect yourself from this type of vulnerability? There's a few options that you have. Uh, you could just wait for this version, 89.0.4389.90, uh, to get released. Um, it looks like it actually is in the stable channel, but I don't think you can really download this version. Like I, I looked up what the latest version was for Google Chrome, like just Googling download Chrome like a normal person would and uh, they don't actually have this version available. So I guess you have to wait. Uh, well, they tell you right here, it's gonna roll out in coming days or weeks. So I guess you could just wait for that to come out. Um, it's not like you're gonna get hacked by just going to any website. You basically have to go to a website uh, that's designed to hack you, but if you're not hardening your browser, then there's a chance that some redirects or some uh, naughty links could end up uh, within your area and you actually do end up on one of those sites. So I guess you can either be really, really careful. Um, you can switch to, I think it's the testing branch to install the latest version of Chrome right now, but obviously I wouldn't really recommend that for somebody that's not very tech savvy. That might be a little bit too complicated to do. Uh, so I guess the best option would be to just install a more secure, less mainstream browser like LibreWolf. Because here's the thing. I know a lot of people, they really like Chrome and obviously I'm biased against Chrome for the same reason that they like Chrome, which is supposed convenient features like, you know, history syncing across your devices and remembering all of your passwords and, you know, syncing all of that across devices and connecting everything to your Google account and basically having Google know everything about you. But the fact is that Google has all but a monopoly on the browser scene and if that doesn't bother you from the perspective of centralized technology and that it's used to spy on you, it should bother you from the perspective of this browser constantly getting hacked. And this isn't going to be the last time that Chrome gets hacked because, you know, black hat, you gotta understand how the black hats work, right? They're not really going to bother trying to exploit obscure browsers like Firefox and certainly not Librawol for one of its hardened forks. They're gonna go after the biggest fish or they're going to throw out the biggest net that they can, which obviously is attacking Chrome. I mean, just imagine the type of person that 
uses Libra Wolf? What am I even going to accomplish from hacking them? What am I going to get? Their Bash RC file, lewd pictures of Richard Stallman, and like 12 terabytes of Japanese midget porn? You're not going to get very valuable things uh, like bank details that are just sitting on someone's desktop in a TXT file, right? That's like that's like stereotypical Chrome user stuff. Uh, so yeah, I would recommend getting yourself an underdog browser that a whole lot of people aren't using so that you won't even be worth the hacker's time in the first place.